So welcome to the session. Good to see you all here. And Georg, um, thank you for being here. We're excited to have you. I'm excited to see the latest version and to see you demo how we can use this as, as journalists. Thanks a lot for the for the intro, Chamery, and uh, thank you everyone for joining. Um, I see a lot more people are still arriving, uh, but we'll just slightly start as we don't have unlimited time. Um, the goal today is really to, first of all, get to know you, uh, but then also to showcase you via research, which is an application that we have developed for efficient online research for journalists and other researchers and content creators who are just doing a lot of online based secondary news based research. Um, I'll be sharing my screen so that you have an idea what we are talking about and going through today. Um, there you are. If you could please mute yourself, uh, everyone who is not talking or not actively raising a question, that would be very helpful. Thanks a lot. Yeah, just to give you a brief overview of uh, what we're going to do in the next 45 minutes that we have together, uh, I've put to gather a short agenda. Um, so first of all, I'll do a brief survey with you that will give you each other a chance also to get to know each other. So we will look at issues that arise in online research, what processes are dominant, what tools are dominant, and you will also have a chance to say what is for you the biggest pain point in your online research. So this really also will help me to maybe tailor the demo a little bit towards you, your pains and your use cases, but it will also help you to get to know the other participants. Uh, what tools are they using? How are they conducting online research? So that's what we're going to kick off with. Um, afterwards, I'll briefly glance over the research process, the journalistic research process as we see it today, and I'll tell you where we focus with our research. But mostly I will then uh, do the demo of our current product version, which is available online. And afterwards, as a kind of thank you, uh, I'll reveal a discount code, uh, which will allow you to access our product also uh, at the rebate so that you can get going with your research also a little bit cheaper than other people can. All right, let's hit it off. Um, I would kindly ask you to join us online for a survey. So you can use your phone or you can also use your web browser on ahaslides.com slash varia1. Uh, so you can scan this QR code to join, or as I said, just use any other uh, web browser to access us online on ahaslides.com. Once you are there, I will see you arrive in our presentation and we will make a short survey, um, which will as I said, dive deeper into online research. I see four of you are already here. Uh, the QR code is still up. Yes, more people are arriving. That's great. So any mobile phone um, should work to scan this. Or as I say, you can open also this in your browser. on uh, slides.com slash varia one. Yes, all right, people are gathering. Um, let's just start. I'm not sure whether all of you are familiar with such online surveys. So I've just entered a small uh, kickoff question um, so that you're getting familiar with the tool. I would be curious where you're dialing in from. All right. It's getting international. Uh, Bloomington Inn. All right. Hello to Canada. All right, cool. You seem to finally understand the product. Uh, that's great. Um, so let's jump into the actual questions um, about journalistic research. Um, this next question should also show up on your phone now, so you can um, answer this one now instead of the prior one. First of all, it would be really interesting to see what are you working on? So what are your research needs? Are you uh, coming from a journalistic background or are you researching more for other content creation for your academic career or are you in a business uh, setting where you're just researching on your analytics job or your business research job? As uh, Jeremy Kaplan from Wonder Tools invited, I kind of thought that this would be skewed towards journalism. Um, but I see we also have quite some other people here. So that's actually good to see. We have quite a diverse audience. 
um, and a lot of freelance journalists. Um, okay. Uh, I can tell you you're in the right place uh, because we already have a lot of freelance journalists using our tool. So you're definitely in the right demo session. Okay, interesting. Uh, let's move on to the next um, section. What are you actually researching on? So what topics are you covering? Uh, what topics are you maybe writing about or regularly researching? You can also obviously select multiple. So I know usually journalism is not restricted to strictly one domain. So if you're writing about or researching multiple areas, you can also select multiple here in that question. I'm again, happy to see that we seem to have a very diverse audience. That's impressive. Nice, a broad spectrum. And of course, um, all of you, when you're researching those areas, you face several issues. So I have selected six issues um, that you see on the right here, but that you also see on your screen if you scroll over them. I would like you to rank them um, to what extent these are actual issues in your research process. So first thing is, Following all relevant news sources is cumbersome. So do you have issues to follow all sources? Or do you feel overwhelmed with all the content that is out there? Second one, um, do you just don't have enough time for all of your research? Third is, um, do you have issues finding old research material? So maybe to write a follow-up story and you have to revisit research content from earlier days. Fourth would be paywalls. So to what extent is running into paywalls of other publishers an issue while you do your research? Fifth would be that you fear to just miss out on relevant content on your topic. So you might miss a relevant story that's developing around the topic that you're covering. And the last, um, do you just get lost with all the open browser tabs and links and online research is just a mess for you? So I see you perfectly understand the tool. It really allows you to slide uh, one to five, whether you don't agree or agree with those statements. For the moment, it seems like the biggest issue among all participants would be to follow all the relevant news sources, followed by uh, the second one to just not have enough time for all of your research. And the third would be that you fear you're missing out on relevant research topics or stories developing around your topic. OK, that's interesting. Um, in our product development process, uh, we do a lot of user research. So we did user interviews with more than 130 journalists from all around the world, asking questions very similar to this one. And um, I can say you're repeating basically the results. So that's also good to see and also conforming, uh, confirming our hypothesis behind the product that we are developing. Interesting, I'm happy to share, by the way, all these results with you after the presentation. Um, let's move on. Um, these were just now six issues that I have picked, but maybe there's just something missing. So if you have additional issues or something that you're struggling with when you're doing your online research, let's hear it. So this is an open-ended question. Um, this might also really be interesting for you to see how other peers um, are doing their online research and what aspects of it they are struggling with. So I assume that the selection from before was not conclusive. Keeping it all organized, yes, I can understand. Verification. Finding expert is an interesting one. Um, we heard that as well frequently when doing our um, user research. But in terms of finding experts, I have to disappoint you because we don't really have a solution for you yet. Um, but you're definitely not alone, I can reassure you.
Yes, authentication structure. Got it. One more participant is typing, I see, then I guess we'll move on. Ah, yes, being drowned in Google Alerts and organizing findings. Right, got it. Okay, last question. Um, some of you already moved ahead and some are very recent. I would be curious to know how can you use chat GPT for research? I mean, there are many ways, but maybe the one who wrote that, do you want to voice how you're already using chat GPT in your research? That's me. I'm I'm asking it for questions I should be considering. Um, points of points of research I should look into, you know, kind of like list out, give me 10 things that have been important in the development of new AI technology, you know, things that I, I can use then to dive deeper into subtopics. Yeah, I mean, uh, that's one way to use this, I guess. Uh, I also saw some horrifying ways that online on LinkedIn, especially uh, people were writing how they plan to use chat GPT. So um, I guess the use case that you mentioned makes a lot of sense, but of course there are others where its uses should be limited and restricted. It's um, already, it's already banned here in New York city from the public schools because they're afraid kids will use it to cheat. Um, so it's definitely already becoming controversial. Yeah, it's like banning calculators in math class, right? Summaries to decide if the news is relevant. Well, I will have something for you. All right, uh, last one coming in, then we'll jump back to the presentation. But uh, that's very helpful. Also, ProQuest seems to be a dominant tool here. And um, a capable browser like Vivaldi, of course, is very helpful for online research. Okay, cool. That was very helpful. Thanks a lot for um, participating. Maybe you also found a tool now in that selection um, that you didn't know before. So please check all of them out. Um, they might also just help you apart from obviously via research that I'm going to present to you now. Um, but it's always good, I guess, and helpful to see how other peers are, are doing their job um, if they work in a similar job than that you are doing. All right, uh, back to the presentation. Um, I'll just want you to understand before I jump into the demo where we are in the whole journalistic research process and how we think um, of journalistic processes and systems. So this is showcasing how we see on a high level the journalistic research process going left to right. So you always start somewhere with the topic discovery. Then you probably have a pitch depending on your setup as an employed or freelance journalist. Then you start with your research, you want move on to content creation, then you get to the review and edit phase. Uh, afterwards, obviously, di distribution and monetization take place. And if you look at the systems and processes beneath that, we see that from left to right, centralization and automation are increasing, um, which means process-wise and system-wise, on the right, at some point, you have the CMS, the content management system. But everything before the CMS is basically BYOP. So it's not bring your own device, but bring your own process. So before the CMS, in terms of processes and systems, there's not really much, there's not much centralization. Um, mostly the journalists or the researchers bring their own process to the, to the work and do it basically their way. So there's not many top-down tools. While once we are in the review and edit phase, and especially in distribution and monetization, everything is strictly top down. So CMS systems, there's usually one per publisher and everyone just has to follow it. Um, we are focusing on the research aspect. So via research, as the name says, is a tool for online research. Um, we are obviously looking into integrations towards CMS systems, but we are in that early phase where usually no dominant tools are around. The fact that there are no dominant process and tools around leaves the journalistic online research process to look like this. So usually you start somewhere online. We, we saw the Vivaldi browser stated before, but usually you start with a search um, through Google or any other search engine. 
then you find some links, you find some notes that you save maybe in Pocket, maybe in Evernote um, or just in Apple Notes. But most of the people just have a Google Doc or a Word file uh, in which they save, copy and paste links and maybe add some comment while a certain link was relevant or why they want to use a certain quote from that link. Afterwards, of course, you have maybe your Dropbox, you have a folder structure and you have emails. Um, all of this really makes the whole research process very fragmented. So you see the forest of tools involved. And at the end of it, an article comes out and only the article is what gets into the CMS. So all the prior research work, all the links, all the notes, um, all the contacts maybe that you have researched and found, this is basically nowhere systematically captured. So what is known as knowledge management in other industries is kind of absent in journalism so far. And we try to really fight that problem with our solution. So as we have seen content uh, creators so far struggle with the mess that they have in online research, um, those fragmented workarounds leave people just really not satisfied and with a lot of inefficiencies. Um, copy pasting links into Word files or Google Docs just doesn't scale and doesn't really allow for much automation. And also media monitoring. So the first part of the process is completely disconnected with the research organization. For us, the solution to this is an integrated product that puts an end to all these workarounds and helps users just to organize research in smart dossiers where everything related to one story can be stored. And ideally, this way, you can also integrate machine learning and AI to finally bring automation and efficiency gains to the process. And of course, we want to close the gap between media monitoring and research organization so that you no longer have to switch between tools all the time. And that's why we built Vaya Research, and that's what we want to achieve with Vaya Research. So I won't tell you too much uh, before just showing you directly in the demo. Wire Research is a SaaS application that allows you to do media monitoring, um, to do your research organization. So everything that belongs to one story can remain in one place. Um, it has embedded AI insights so that you can get automated summaries for articles, uh, as well as sentiment and content analysis, plus further automation, um, just to really speed up your process and to never miss the relevant story around your topic. That's uh, via research in a nutshell, but let's just have a look at the live product um, so that you can better understand uh, what it is all about. Um, as Jeremy said in the beginning, so if, if you have any questions, um, just feel free to ask, uh, unmute yourself, uh, jump in or ask in the, in the chat and then Jeremy can pick it up. All right, we are in via research. Uh, so as I said, it's a SaaS product, uh, meaning it's available online. Uh, on the research.vire.media. Um, you can also access this via our homepage, vire.media. And this is where you will end up. So as I said, our core promise is to bring together media monitoring and research organization. We are starting off here in the media monitoring section. So we are in the feeds view where users can create basically as many feeds as they want to follow all the topics that they are currently occupied with, that they are currently researching. Um, in terms of feeds, you can add currently three types of feeds. So you can add a Varia feed, which is based on a global news collection of around 400 sources that we just uh, crawl and parse on a daily basis. You can add RSS feeds from any source that you have. So some of you mentioned in the survey before that RSS is one of your favorite tools. So you can also create RSS feeds in Varia Research. Or you can create a Bing News Feed, uh, which is based on the Bing News API. Now that uh, Google, Google News API is no longer available, um, Bing News API has become sort of the most powerful news API out there for a business. Uh, hence, we also offer it. I'll just create the Bing News Feed as an example here um, on a current topic. Like the current riots in Brazil. So let's see what we get. Um, the moment I obviously start to type, my, my query gets modified and I get the first preview of my feed. Um, if those results are already good for me, I can create the feed as such. I might also want to limit it to, let's say, certain sites. So 
if I say I only want results uh, from CNN to just see what CNN uh, is reporting on the current Brazil riots, I can further restrict my query um, just to see what CNN is reporting on that topic. If that's fine for me, I hit create. And this new example feed is added to my collection. As I said before, we really want to close this gap and those fragmented workarounds. So we want to make it as easy as possible to, once you find an interesting article that you could immediately also start your research organization. So let's, let's take this one as an example. Let's add it to a dossier. I did not really work on this Brazil riots topic so far. So among all my um, dossiers, I don't have that yet. So I create a new one. Leave it the same name as the feed, hit create. And a new dossier has now been created and this first article has been added. So let's go there to see what happened over there. I'll hit dossiers to jump to the dossier section. Obviously you see here a lot of dossiers. So I'm right now in my own personal account. Um, the last one that I've just created is on top. And the dossiers that we have built really follow the credo of one story, one place, meaning everything that belongs to one story should be available in one place. That means now the article that we have saved here is already there, but also notes are here, contacts can be added here and files can be added. Uh, we'll go through all these tab one by one. Um, in the beginning, you see a short, short uh, preliminary label, which means that the content is still processed by our machine learning engine. Uh, this usually takes a couple of seconds to a minute, depending on the size of the article. Uh, but as you see, uh, once you refresh it, it, it go it's gone, which means that all the AI is now available for this article. Each article, first of all, can be viewed inside um, Vada Research. So you can have a look at the article. Uh, you can scroll through it and maybe also highlight uh, certain aspects that you want to use for, let's say, a quote. So you can add a comment. Um, maybe you want to fact checked something so you can add it in another other uh, category um, make a note about that as well so that whenever you go back to this article on the right hand side you will have all your annotations and you will immediately see oh um, i want to use this as a quote or i need still to fact check uh, certain things um, so that's one thing but for each article there is also a details view available um, you can select that right here or also through the drop down menu here. That is what is happening in our machine learning section. So, for each article, you have, of course, the metadata available. You can add all sorts of tags um, to an article to find it easily again later. But also, each article gets an automated summary. And based on our user research, we have created the summaries in an extractive manner, which means each sentence that you read here is also present in that way in the original article. So it's not an abstractive summarizer, it's an extractive summarizing, uh, which I guess in a journalistic use case um, is something that you want to see because you want to have a reliable summary and not a made up sentence that might be skewing some of the facts of the original article. Jörg, there's a question from Angelica about, um, is there any prioritization as to which results appear in the topic feed? Is there, in other words, is there a particular order that the results are sorted in, um, in that, I think in the original topic feed when you did that search? Uh, yeah, so in the example feed that I have created, this was a Bing News API feed. Um, they are shown and sorted by Bing. So they go for uh, current traffic and popularity of the news article. So Bing has a vast collection of news uh, sources that they cover and they sort it by recency and popularity of the news content. And what about in your own, in the other search option? Uh, if you, let me just jump back to, to show it to you an example. If you create the Varia feed, for example, um, I think I already have one here. We try to make it as, like here, I have a Varia feed on the Ukraine conflict. We try to make it as close to your search query. So the closer the results fit your search query, obviously, the more they will appear on top. And each feed then also is obviously, as it is a feed, it's obviously sorted also for recency. So you see here, everything is from January 10th. Uh, once you have scrolled through all the results, according to the query from January 10th, you will get to those of the next day. Uh, but in our Vadia feeds, we really might try to make it as closely fitting to your 
input uh, criteria as possible. So here, I, for instance, selected that it should have Ukraine as an entity present. Um, so if an article has Ukraine present more dominantly than another article, this article will uh, turn up on top. I hope this answers the question. So I'll move back to my Brazil um, dossier that I have created with this first article in it. Um, we have seen in the details of this one, um, the summary so far. Um, apart from the summary, there's also an entity analysis. So you see each um, key people, organization, locations, and miscellaneous entities that are mentioned in the article. And you see a sentiment to it. So this entire article appears to be very negative. Uh, you also see it in the overall sentiment. Um, red means negative, green means positive. Um, usually you have a sort of a mix here, but this article seems to be, um, yeah, well, it's about the hospital visits and riots and police violence. So there's not much positive sentiment in this article, no surprise. Um, at the end of it, you also see similar articles. So we immediately look for other articles on the same topic uh, that might have a different perspectives. So this should really help you to try to create pluralistic stories and to try to integrate different perspectives in your research. And obviously, whenever you see an article that fits um, your research topic, you can immediately add it to your dossier. So you don't have to leave the application. You can just continue your research here, add a second article, um, and just, yeah, without having to jump around from one tool to the other, drive your research forward. Moving to the second tab, um, recommendations is like an extension of that. So this is not just based on one article, but this is based on your entire dossier. So the more articles you add to a dossier, the better we know what are you talking about, what are you actually researching. Hence, we can look for more uh, precisely fitting recommendations for your research. So we give you um, a host of recommendations that you might also consider for your research. So these are all articles related to your topic. If you add more articles to your dossier, the recommendations can be reloaded as they dynamically change. Obviously, the more content you add, as I said, the better we understand your research topic. And to make it fast, um, one of you in the survey before said it would be good to have um, summaries of news articles to know whether they are relevant for your research. That's exactly the point of this. So you can scroll through your recommendations here really quickly, click on each. And for each of them, have a look at the summary. So you have a five bullet summary for each article that is automatically generated. And it will give you a chance to really quickly understand whether you need this article for your research um, or maybe it's not relevant for your current research dossier here. If you need it, um, one click to add it to your current dossier and you can continue the research. You can also search externally. So also here, this is based on the Bing News API. Um, you can change the search query to whatever you want or take the suggested query, which is based on your current dossier, just to see what Bing uh, maybe also has outside of our recommendations. So also here with one click, um, you can add it to your dossier and really drive your research forward in a very, very fast manner. Jörg, there's a question from Vera about, uh, can you add websites manually to the dossiers, not the recommended ones, but from other places? And is it possible to add scientific publications or papers of other kinds? Yes, absolutely. Um, let's jump to that right away. So um, apart from our feeds and the recommendations, you can add content from all over the internet. Um, so we have developed a bookmarklet. You see it right here on top. This can be installed to every browser like that. So you simply drag and drop it. You can change the name if you want to, but by default, it's called Add to Varia. It will appear in your browser up here. Um, and this allows you to just add any content from anywhere. So like here, uh, this is an article of, of Jeremy as an example from his Wonder Tools blog. Um, you click on Add to Varia. Our book art marklet then opens direct access to Varia research. So you see immediately all your dossiers. You also see the dossier that I have just created where you can add content as well. And as I have now added this Wonder Tools article, which is obviously unrelated to the Brazil riots, uh, you could also add any other content. So you could add a YouTube video, you can add a PDF um, that's online hosted, whatever you find online. The bookmarklet allows you to store content from all over the internet. 
Um, Cesar, um, um, Caesar is asking about if the what happens if the article is updated, changes made later on the post, will that show up on the dossier saves, or, or would that affect the annotation? He's asking. Uh, no, so the moment you add an article to the dossier, that's when we parse it. Um, that's when we will basically um, save it, and this is how it will stay. So if you want to update it again, you would have to add it anew. Um, we don't have any automated way to kind of show you whether a publisher has made changes to an article. Um, so we're looking into that because we have heard that request already a few times to maybe develop some sort of a timeline where you could see how the publisher has changed or updated an article over time. Um, but for now, what you see is what you get, meaning at the moment that you add an article to the dossier, that's when it's being parsed and that's how it will also stay. Um, yeah, because also otherwise those annotations, of course, would, uh, would potentially get messed up or get lost. So we have to just take it as it is once you parse it. Uh, yes, moving on in the dossier. So we have seen the recommendations, um, how that works. Um, and then let's move on to notes. So obviously each research also has notes and hence we included a full text, a rich text notes editor uh, where you can create as many notes as you want. So I don't really have to explain notes in much detail, I guess, but this is a rich text editor that allows you to create lists. Uh, you can add pictures, copy and paste, basically everything that you need inside here. Um, as I said, you can create as many notes as you want, so really uh, as much as you need for, for your research. Um, yeah, for also task, we have already seen people trying to edit and draft stories inside here. That's not really what we have created it for, but if we see more and more people doing it, obviously we will go further in that direction and develop that into a proper um, editor to write. Um, other than that, as I said, the idea behind the dossiers is really one story, one place. So you always, when you do research, you have experts, you have potential interview partner, you have people you want to talk to. So we have a contacts directory embedded in the product where you can just add contacts from your contact directory. And I think, yes, I even have Jeremy here. So um, if Jeremy happens to be an expert on Brazil, I can add him to the dossier. Um, right now, he is the director of teaching and learning at CUNY, so that's already correct. But maybe I can just um, extend that. So in his description, I could say, knows lots about Brazil. Um, so that whenever I do another research and another topic on Brazil or Brazil related, I would find him again. So let's quickly go there. Um, I have in my entire contacts directory already a lot of other contacts as well. Um, lots of them obviously test contacts. But here, now that we had said um, Jeremy is an expert on Brazil, if I filter for Brazil, Jeremy will immediately show up. So, which means, should I ever do a story again on Brazil, I can just go to my contacts directory and I'll find Jeremy again, uh, which will really help me find my old experts again. If I click on him, I also see that he has now been linked to the Brazil riots, and I see he's already linked to the media industry, which is obviously very fitting as indeed he's an expert on that. Um, Blake, Blake asked about what kind of security is there for your contacts or sources, um, and I'm also at, uh, curious if you can import, like if you have a CRM of some sort, or you have a list of contacts in a spreadsheet or something, if you can bring that in. Uh, we are working on that. So we're working on imports. So far, we're just really prioritizing the channels that we should focus on most. So CSV files versus Outlook-based or Gmail-based contact importing. Uh, so we're just obviously listening also to the audience. So Blake, if you have a preferred tool that you would want us to focus on first, uh, let's hear it. For now, you have to add contact manually. And in terms of security, um, this is all hosted on our service based in Germany. Um, security as such is really permanent in the whole application. So we have different VPN mounts behind all the libraries that we have. And the application from ground up has been designed as secure as possible. So nothing is, is thrown around and we don't look, we can't even look into your contacts or analyze your contacts. This is really your data as secure as possible. I hope that answers the question. If you obviously have a first tool that you would want to want us to focus for your contact imports, uh, maybe write it in the chat, then we can try to prioritize that. 
Um, Cesar is asking about uh, whether you can export a dossier, um, which is related to a question I have as well, which is like if people are using Notion or Rome or Tana or whatever tool yeah. for organizing other notes, um, do you envision this integrating into that through exports and imports, or do you see this as replacing that, or kind of how do you see how do you see this fitting in? Uh, we are looking into all those, or um, yeah, points to basically connect to. Um, I'll get to one of those integrations that we've already done in a second. Uh, Notion is interesting. Others are also interesting. We just don't really see for now yet the clear strategy for those. So exporting entire dossiers, exporting all your links, all your bookmarks. That's coming soon so that's something that's definitely going to be possible um integrating to what exact applications is just not prioritized yet so for now we look more to import not really towards exports uh, this just really helps people going um but we are open for requests so if if you have a specific demands to tool integrations we're obviously happy to to hear them and happy to to pass it on into our product program just as a side note, I think these next couple of years are going to be a huge um, turning point in terms of in, um, integration points and APIs for a lot of these NOS tools like Obsidian and Tana and Roman and all of the tools um, are, as of now, quite separate. Um, Notion has built a lot of APIs, but I suspect there's going to be um, new opportunities to kind of integrate, um, which will make it possible for people to combine all sorts of different tools that they happen to happen to like. But it's still very much in in development, I don't think. The tools are all connecting yet. Um, Christina has another comment about, um, has a comment about uh, asking about it. She said, I would love an integration with the functionalities of Google Pinpoint. Um, and Christina, maybe you can elaborate a little bit on that as to which which kind of functionality um, do you have in mind? Maybe you're talking about like the OCR, uh, you know, um, audio transcription, um, transcription of handwritten notes. I think those are the kinds of things that that Google Pinpoint does that maybe you're referring to, but maybe you can specify if if those are the things you have in mind. Um, searching a large data set of PDFs, those are things that they um, enable. Um, if people import hand handwritten notes or audio files, is that is that material that Varia could um, work with at this point, Georg, or or it's pretty much uh, what are the kinds of files that people can import? all types of files uh, but we can't really process anything other than text at the moment okay. so we are not like we don't have a transcriber integrated in our product for the moment we also don't have an OCR based hand uh, rating analyzer like Google Pinpoint has that for instance um, I think that's a slightly different use case that Google Pinpoint tries to fulfill but we are looking into that and the way we would try to connect to Google Pinpoint would be just to allow you to import documents so if you have created a folder or a collection in, in Google Pinpoint that you could just import or copy that collection into a dossier of wire research. Um, yeah, maybe that is all, or was already the use case that you were wondering about, Christina. Otherwise, i um, happy to hear the precise question. No, I was just thinking about um, combining these both tools because they have different functionalities, um, which was already mentioned, like transcripts, finding text and photos, doing the index of mentioned peoples, towns and organizations, which is another step, um, which is not already in Varia. And um, what's in Varia is missing in Google Pinpoint, of course. Yeah, exactly. I mean, on one hand, we also have to differentiate ourselves from from Google Pinpoint. So we we try to find the the use cases that Google is not serving, while at the same time, obviously, we have to integrate to to what they are offering. Yeah, and um, yeah. So thanks for the for the input. We are looking into that, and as I said, we we more think of connecting one dossier of ours to the collections that you have in Pinpoint without really replicating the services. Um, in terms of files. Um, we already connect to Dropbox, so you see it now on my screen. Um, also there, we really want to allow you to work with whatever you already have. So Google Drive is obviously coming next. We're working on that as we speak. Um, but this really allows you also to work with folder structures and organizations you might already have. So you don't have to throw overboard um, existing uh, workflows or existing um, folder structures that you have. Same um, is true in our interim. Um, so the interim is a sort of storage where you can save things without any dossier um, logic. So you can just, as the read later place, you can just save also through the bookmarket. Um, if you click to the bookmarket, 
you of course have the dossiers as I have shown in the example before, but you also have access to our interim. Um, you see that here. So the interim is really just a storage that is not related to any dossier. Uh, it's just basically a bulk list uh, where you can so save also all sorts of um, articles and documents. Again, the moment you save anything in via research, all the machine learning magic is happening, which means for every article also here in the interim, you have the summary available, you have the sentiment and entity analysis, and you also get different perspectives on, on this article. So all the machine learning benefits are also here available in the interim, um, but it's not tied to a dossier. So this might just be something you consider for your research, but you're not sure yet whether you need it for your work. And here is another integration that we have already accomplished. Uh, we have integrated Pocket. So many of you have probably heard of Pocket, might be using Pocket either for professional or private use. Um, and we have just integrated it. So you can um, add your Pocket account and then all your Pocket saves. Uh, these are now my personal Pocket saves um, are also appearing in Varia. And as of here, you can immediately continue adding them to a dossier. You could um, also uh, change them, move them to the Varia interim, also archive them in Pocket so you don't have to archive it in two places. And this really allows you basically to keep on using Pocket. So if you use Pocket and you're used to using Pocket, you can just continue doing this. But whenever you need something for your professional use, it's also here in Varia Research and you can benefit from all the advanced features that we offer and that Pocket doesn't really have. Yeah, all of this, of course, comes uh, with a few other features and perks. So for instance, you have different view types available for each. You can uh, filter and search based on date, based on author. Um, I guess I don't need to go through all these tiny features um, in this demo. We have a few minutes left, so I would really like to use that for a few remaining questions and then a closing remark. So if you have some more questions, Let's maybe hear it now before I jump back to the PowerPoint presentation. Yeah, thanks, Georg. This is great. Great demo. Um, uh, Crystal asked about security and, and Blake asked about security yeah. as well. Cloud-based tools create security concerns for journalists. Blake says, does VARIA encrypt information? Is there two-factor authentication signing in? Um, any other comments about security? Uh, Two-factor authentication is not there yet. Uh, we have not seen much demand for that. Uh, what we really place a big emphasis on is just the security of your data and creating as much security between the different types of data that we have. So as I said, um, data is hosted on our servers in Germany and each partition of the databases are behind different VPN mounts. So it's as, as safe as it can possibly be for an online tool. We know that there are some people who never fully trust an online tool, so we are also working on a self-hosted version, uh, especially for the upcoming uh, B2B version, enterprise version. This will be possible to self-host as well. Um, at the same time, we know that this is not the bulk of use cases, so most people are still happy with an online um, solution. We see that uh, when we look at Notion and other tools that are heavily used by journalists. So I think, um, yeah, we are doing our best to keep your data as safe as possible. Um, you're happy to challenge that and to try to break something. Um, we are not so much afraid. And if you have further questions, of course, about the data security, happy to discuss it further. So happy to just drop an email and then we can look into specific questions in more detail. Um, Dan Barnes has a question about, uh, he said, would like to hear about your API for connection to CMS tools like uh, Superdesk and content planning tools like DeskNet. Yeah, uh, we are right now talking to CMS providers uh, in terms of creating our API and for such such connections to CMSs. Um, that's not properly defined yet. So we are not at a stage where we have a publicly a available API that you could just hook up to your CMS yet. Uh, we are still early. So this product only launched in July last year. And we are really just in the discussions right now with CMS providers in terms of what sort of connections, what sort of API endpoints they would need um, to get that going. So this is there's no publicly available API at the moment for, for CMS connection. Well, I think we're about at our time. Um, this has been a great demo, Georg. Do you want to just any any final last um, thoughts you want to share before we before we uh, conclude? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, right on time. Thanks a lot uh, for all of you staying with us until now. Um, 
and uh, kind of as a reward, as I promised in the beginning, um, you can find us on www.varia.media. And with the discount code WONDERTOOLS, uh, you will have access to our paid plan uh, with 30% off. Varia Research comes as a freemium product, so you can anyway just start for free, uh, which is obviously metered, which means you will have restrictions on the numbers of dossiers you can create and the number of feeds you can create. Uh, but the paid plan is available at 11 euros per month. And as the, the slide shows with the discount code Wonder Tools, you can get it at 30% off. This also applies for the annual plan. So the annual plan is 110 euros a year. And also there you can use the discount code to get 30% off. Uh, I've created this valid for one week. So this is valid until the 18th of January. Um, of course, we are happy to hear more questions and also hear feedback once you have tested the tool. So once you have made some first steps in bio research, uh, we have embedded the feedback widget in the tool itself, but also I'm I'm here for you. We are here for you. So just drop us an email um, if you have questions, if you have feedback or requests, uh, what we should integrate next, what we should work on next. I'm always happy to hear it. And that, Jeremy, completes Great. it from my part. Great. Great. Um, thank you so much for for uh, for doing this, Georg. It's been really, uh, I think, a great demo. Um, good way for people to see how it works, what it works, what it does. I mean, what it does, what its functions are, and and uh, and what are some use cases. So that was really efficient and helpful, and uh, right to the point. And uh, thanks for everyone for joining it and for great questions. And hopefully, this this resonates and is useful for for. For you and and thanks Georg for for making the tool and for and for uh, walking us through it. Thanks, thanks Jeremy, and thanks again to all participants. It's been a pleasure. See you around. See you see you soon, everyone. Have a great rest of your day. Thanks, Georg. Bye. -bye. Bye.